Hi everybody and welcome to the topic called time value of money and discounting cash flows. In my opinion, this is the most important topic in corporate finance since it is pretty much used in all other topics. That's why we will spend good time on these exercises here because these are of course some of the things you can see in an exam but there are hundreds of variations. So we will see how to deal with as many variations as possible and try to learn the principles since they also apply in a bunch of other topics. Before we dig into the assignments, we will just talk a little bit about some theory. So for this specific assignment, you can see what kind of formulas we will apply from the formula collection. But let's, let's first talk a little bit about the theory. So in time value of money, we generally have three rules that always apply. The first rule is that you can only add, combine and compare values that are in the same point in time. That means that if you have a value that is compounded forward to, for example, time five, you cannot add that to a present value at time zero. It simply doesn't make sense. It's like adding apples and oranges. The second rule is, if you want to move a cash flow forward in time, you must compound it. Often you will hear teachers say that this is called forward discounting. The right term is compounding, but if you hear forward discounting, it means the same. The third rule, is that if you want to move a cash flow backward in time, you must, you must discount it. These two rules, rule number two and three, says moving cash flows. This could also be moving values. So is, if, for example, as we will see in one of the assignments, if you have a value of a perpetuity in the future, that is not a specific cash flow, but a future value, you can still discount that back to, for example, the present value. So that's the three rules that we will see always apply when we talk about time value of money. Then I have made four questions here that you will always have to ask yourself when dealing with time value of money. These four rules apply to also the topic called discounting cash flows and we'll see why they are quite handy. So when I first had to learn how to discount values in corporate finance, I used these four questions all the time. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, what are we actually looking for in the assignment? Do we need to calculate a present value or a future value? For example, if we want to use a present value, that could be that we wanted to compare two types of loans, or compare a loan with a leasing, for example. So we could see which alternative was the cheapest. Future value is often considered when you look at savings, for example, or savings for a pension. You could calculate how much money have I saved up by the end of a period. That could be five years or six years or 10 years. So remember, look out, are you going to calculate a present value or future value? The second question you have to ask yourself is, what are the characteristics of the cash flows? In corporate finance, we generally have three different characteristics, and I'll just make a comment to each of them. The first one is the most easy one maybe to spot, and that's where we have no pattern. So imagine that you had a stream of cash flows in the future, that varied from 10 to 200 to 70 to 30, and there was no pattern in the cash flows. So that would normally just be a cash flow stream that we would have to look at. The second alternative is the annuity. So the annuity is a constant or growing cash flow in a limited time period. And how can you distinguish this one from the cash flow stream? What you can do is you can say if the cash flow is constant in the whole period, it is easy to spot that it's annuity. It could be, for example, that a person was saving up 1,000 kroner every month for 24 months. That would be an annuity. 
The second alternative is if the annuity is actually growing. And by growing, it doesn't mean that it is growing by 10 the one year and 70 another year and then 30, because that would be a cash flow stream. But the growth here would be a constant growth, meaning that, for example, the cash flow was growing by 2% every year. So that would mean every year or every month, we would add 2% to the cash flow. The final alternative we have in corporate finance is called a perpetuity. The perpetuity is a cash flow that continues forever. And continuing forever could also be stated in assignments like uh, in all future years or never ending, for example. So if a cash flow is never ending, we are dealing with a perpetuity. A perpetuity can be both constant or growing, just as we saw with the annuity. So that is the three different characteristics we normally have in corporate finance. Then the third question you have to ask yourselves is, is the cash flow constant or growing? So we already touched a little bit upon this, but you need to find out, do we actually have a growth in the period or not? And you can see a note here that this is only relevant for annuities and perpetuities. And that's because a specific, uh, a cash flow without any specific pattern, so a cash flow stream, is not dependent on a, a, like a limited or a constant growth. So if we do not have any growth, but the cash flow is constant, we can see that our growth rate G, which we will come back to, equals zero. So we can use a simple or standard annuity or perpetuity. If we have growth, so G is different from zero, often in assignments this will be positive, so maybe G could be 2% we would have to use a growing annuity or a growing perpetuity. The final question that I normally ask myself when having these assignments on time value of money is, is the cash flow starting today or in one period? So it makes a great difference in corporate finance if, for example, we start a cash flow today or in one period. So if we start a cash flow today instead of in one period, so that would be in the beginning of a period, we call it due. That means if we have an annuity, it would be called an annuity due. With perpetuities, we can also have a perpetuity due. That simply means that we have a perpetual or a cash flow that never ends, that actually starts today and not in one period. But the typical one in exam assignments, that is an annuity due. Just remember that you have to make adjustments based on if the cash flow is starting today or in one period. And that also is true for the cash flows without any patterns. It just means that if we're finding the present value, for example, we would not discount the first cash flow because it is already at the present time. So the next three slides here in the formula collection sort of highlights the most important formulas. And the question is always, are there any more formulas? And the answer is typically yes. So in corporate finance, you would often in a book, a classic American textbook, see between 250 and 350 different formulas applied. That doesn't mean that you have to learn them all by heart. Some of them you can learn by heart, but, but some of them are more tricky. It simply means that you have to select which ones are applied the most often. So I have combined here four formulas relating to um, topic three in the Asperi uh, corporate finance book. So we have one called future value. That is where we find the future value, short for FV, equals the present value multiplied by one plus the interest rate or discount rate into the power of t, so number of periods. So that's when we have to find the future value. Finding the present value, so when we go the other way, so that is when we discount, you can see that we simply take the future value multiplied by one plus r into the power of minus t. So you can see that the small minus here makes a great uh, deal of difference when we talk about discounting and compounding. There is an alternative here where you see the future value divided by 
1 plus r to the power of t, and that's exactly the same as the calculation we have here. Then we have two special formulas, and that's where I have isolated t, so the required periods to reach a future value based on the present value and a discount rate, and down here we have the required rate based on the future value and the present value into the power of 1 over t minus 1. So these two formulas here are not seen that often in exams, but it's a small thing that teachers like to do to see if you can actually isolate a term in the formulas over here. The next two slides, that's the uh, topic four in the Aspiri um, corporate finance book. It's called discounted cash flow. And here you can see I have collected, um, this is the future value of cash flow streams, present value of cash flow streams. Then we have annuities, present values, annuities, future values, and a growing annuity present value. Often you will just see this one as a present value and not a future value. And on the final sheet here, we have the perpetuities. We have a perpetuity without growth, and we have a perpetuity with growth. That is the G down here. And then finally, we have two formulas that are used in some exams where we have to find the effective annual rate based on a quoted rate. So that's sort of the formulas that we have in the package here relating to this topic. But now it is time to dig into the assignment. Mm -hmm.